off we're off to well we're not off we're here we're at Malham Cove today uh, one of our staycations well stay no it's a weekend so but we, this is what we're going to be doing for staycation so we're at Malham Cove today Lovely, it's like a tea room called Beck Hall and it's yeah, absolutely yeah, fabulous. Was, was oh, you're on your cuddling me, I thought you wanted to be picked up. Oh, and it's just fabulous, it's so quaint and lovely. Yeah, go on Frankie Jack, yeah. we wanted to go across. It's fabulous, look, and then you've got your tea rooms over there. But what they've done is they're just the best sign ever to make sure that you uh, come here for afternoon tea and you visit it so as you're coming up the big sign is so big that you can't miss it and it's so different I'll show you in a minute uh, that you've just got to definitely come down here and have a look so that is the sign so as you're walking up you really can't miss that what a great bit of marketing because you really want to because you come up the road and you see it, it looks so weird and wonderful it makes you want to go and have a look and there's also, as you walk down to it, this quaint little house that's got loads of birdhouses outside and it really is definitely an Instagrammable picture setting. Why are we Frankie Chat? We're super excited! <laughs> <laughs> We're super excited! Frankie Jack watches a programme on YouTube of a family and that's all they say all the time. We're super excited! So I take the mickey. <laughs> yeah, you get little snippets like this that are just so beautiful. There's another walk. I know there's loads of walk, but we're doing, we're doing Malham Cove today. Yes, we will. It really is very impressive. We can see it because I've very impressive. One of the highest waterfalls in the world. Gary reckons one of the highest waterfalls in the world. I thousands of years ago. I don't know that thousands of years ago. Here. A bit of history here. You'll have to excuse my camera work. I'm only working off my phone. I haven't bought a decent camera yet, but hopefully I will do. Um, but also as well, Frankie Jack's got his gloves on. I bought those for his bike for the pump track, and he's got that obsessed with them. He's taken them everywhere with him. So and he thinks he's like a bit like Spider Man because he's got them on. So you'll probably hear a bit about Spider Man in a moment that he's going to say. But this is totally, totally impressive. It is wow. Yeah, that's it. Go on. Right, go on. We open the gates with our feet or we open them with tissues or like a disinfectant Dettol wipe um, so we don't touch anything during these times. Frankie Jack's going to just talk about Hulk and Spider-Man in a moment. I bet Hulk wouldn't be able to lift that mountain up. You bet Hulk wouldn't be able to lift it up? No. Uh. Well, I bet Spider-Man's red would be able to drag it. I don't know whether Spider-Man will be able to drag it, but I bet he'd be able to climb up it. He can hold his weapon then. Yeah. Then he would be going like this. He would. And what would Spider-Man be? He'd be super excited. <laughs> I don't think you can get any further. That is madness. Go stand on that branch. Go stand on that branch and hold on to it with your gloves. With your blue gloves or anything. Go on. No, you're all right. Go and walk on it. Ooh, chick, 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 chicken. Lay a little leg for me. Chick, 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 chicken. I had to go over there to get him to walk on this spectacular tree. 
So here we go, here's the start. The steps can be uh, and are a little bit steep right at the start. And you see a lot of people taking breaks, but don't worry about that. Just get to the top because you've got to see it. It is absolutely spectacular. You'll hear my breath a couple of times. That's because I'm asthmatic, so my breathing's never been the best. Um, but I managed to get up absolutely fine. I'm not sure if these steps are really big They're big steps, aren't they? Well, they are big steps, aren't they? Yeah, we use the first steps to walk in up. Yeah, big steps, you're right, Frank, is you? It's all right, I can open this with my foot. So here's a bit of a background. Malham Cove is in the Yorkshire Dales National Park and it's a roughly around about a kilometre from the village of Malham and it was formed by a waterfall carrying melt water from glaciers at the end of the last ice age, more than 12,000 years ago. Go on. Dig deep. Go on, run it. Run the last way. Come on. But it wasn't the last bit and I made myself out of breath. <laughs> but I pushed myself. I always try and do that last little bit by running if we do Pendle Hill or anywhere like that. Okay, so this is going to blow your mind, but you've seen it in a couple of films, no doubt. But this looks like it basically is a large limestone pavement that's above the cove. But actually, it looks like, if you can imagine how you envisage a brain in a picture, that's what it looks like. And you've got to step, and you've got to step down in a couple of bits. Frankie Jack wanted to do a little bit of rock climbing, as he called it, with his gloves on. But it really is absolutely mind-blowingly brilliant to look at so if you can go I would highly highly recommend it but I'm going to give you some of the films that it's actually been in so um, it's been in the cove along with in, along with uh, nearby Cordale Scar uh, that was featured on an episode of the BBC TV series Seven Natural Wonders as one of the natural wonders of Yorkshire it's also uh, been in Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. It was the pavement that was used as a shooting location for the 1992 film version. You will probably have seen it in Harry Potter, The Deathly Hallows, part one. It's the place where Hermione and Harry visited and the scenes were filmed in November 2009. And then the limestone pavement and general location of Malham featured an episode of The Trip starring uh, Steve Coogan and Rob Brydon, which aired on BBC uh, Two from on the 29th of November 2009 and 10 but look at it it is wow isn't it i mean it, and you can imagine it in harry potter i've not seen the film yet which i need to and any any harry potter fans are probably horrified at that but you can see how spectacular it is and a bit eerie Cove and then we walked up to the Malantarn and as we're walking up there was a gentleman that was walking near us he's fallen and uh, he's hurt himself oh my god and all I've been thinking I feel sick in my stomach that he's going to be okay so we stopped to try and help 
but I called on some other people that were walking past and asked everybody if they were doctor or nurse and there was a first aider. So they stayed to, to look after him. I said, can I make any phone calls? Can I do anything? Because I'm useless. Um, and we couldn't. Anyway, so I said, what do I do? And they said, just go on because there was three of them. So anyway, what we did was, um, as we were walking, we saw a helicopter coming over top. Excuse me, I'm a bit out of breath because I've just been carrying Frankie Jack. And this magnificent beast, and this is the man um that drives it and this has come down to help him and i just oh i could get choked and teary but he's okay but he was on his own and it's so sad isn't it that somebody's been out for a lovely walk and that's happened but it looks like he's going to be absolutely fine and the ambulance are, are coming back now and who's tried to help him so and that's the yorkshire air ambulance and how fantastic is that it's amazing isn't it what what, what they can do in these because i could not have, i just said to gary if couldn't have done anything we'd have had to get our arms underneath him and I don't know what we'd have done but I, there's no way we'd have left him but luckily there was first aiders that knew what they were doing and had everything in their backpacks and were walking so it was very lucky we stopped on the way back and had a natter with him and he was absolutely fine and just going for a checkup at hospital which was really good and he was up walking we spoke to Colin who was flying the helicopter and also there was um, a BBC cameraman there that was filming so you're probably going to see it on one of those programs or documentaries that they film um, in the future so this was the valley as we we're going back down this is actually where he tripped and fell but so so pleased on my way back I felt a lot more settled that he was okay and that everything was was good and he was going to hospital to be checked over um, a really really good walk though and very very long but we had our little munchkin with us and he did a little bit of moaning on the way to Malantan. I think it was quite a stretch for him we walked for roughly around about four to five hours but on the way back obviously with the helicopter and the climbers um, Frankie Jack was obviously very worried about the man as well um, but it was something that was you know mind taking his mind off it on the way back and then once we got to this bit where he was able to rock climb again he was in his element and then of course it was going back down now since then since we have got home uh, Gary's got um, proper walking boots on I've actually ordered Frankie Jack and I proper walking boots because we're going to be doing a lot more of this over the summer period that's the helicopter Frankie Jack that's that man <laughs> So if you've been part of our YouTube family for quite a while, you'll know how I love magical experiences for kids and me. <laughs> you can never grow too old for it. And so what we were also pretending is if you've not seen Frozen 2 yet, then when you watch it, it'll, it'll make sense. But the Enchanted Forest has actually got rock monsters in it. So we were pretending that these were the rock monsters that were asleep and that were going to wake if we made any noises or if they moved, it was the rock monster moving his feet. And Frankie Jack absolutely loved it. There's nothing better than that sort of mystical magical world is there and uh, so we were doing that on the way back which was very very funny um and then we obviously headed back down but my toes were hurting so that's why i've ordered the boots um my adidas trainers i love them but my feet were slipping around in them and i just thought this is no good now i've got hiking shoes but they are really uncomfortable and they hurt my ankles so um that's why i bought the boots and i've got a really good deal on them uh from i think it's jd sports um and the comment i'll let you know how i get on with them. So back down the hill and actually feel my toes because they were hurting at this point. Uh, but there's a pretty spectacular bit that you've got to go and see at the bottom as well. So you stand at the bottom. Of it. So you've been on the top and you've been at the bottom. I wanted to go to the bottom afterwards so we'd make sure we'd done the big walk first. Now, a real top tip is that it'll cost you anywhere between sort of three to five pounds park. Um, so you need to take your parking money. Um, and also as well, get there early. You don't want to be doing it later because there's a lot of crowds. And obviously with social distancing, 
there's a lot of what I call wallies still out there that are not bothered about the social distancing and I am so we got there very early in the morning to be able to do the walk so there was less people as we were leaving it was heaving but look how spectacular it looks I don't think in all my life I've ever been on such a beautiful mystical magical walk and I never knew about the Harry Potter but once somebody told me once we got back I can really see it it's great for Frankie Jack to be learning about all this as well there was cows on the way out and um, I tried to get um, a selfie with one of them obviously it weren't really playing ball <laughs> barbecue <laughs> I know we've got the big one there but we took this um, with us um, when we went up Malham Cove but this underneath here when you use this this is meant to have batteries in it so which it has now but it didn't when we took it to Malham Cove. So when we got it out, we couldn't use it because it had no battery. So we brought it home and we thought, right, first time, we'll try it out. Anyway, we've just had salmon fillets, we've had prawn skewers, and we've had hamburgers, and they've been absolutely delicious. Really, really, really fantastic. So really, really enjoyed it. It's cooked really well. Um, I would highly recommend it. And also, it's been on this, and you can see it hasn't burnt at all underneath the table because it's on its little feet. Um, it's been really, really good. Really fantastic. Love it. Really enjoyed tea tonight as well. Um, we're sat outside. Look how much my flowers have grown. The garden's not looked after the same when I'm not there, but never mind. Uh, it's still looking spectacular and the flowers are coming through. Haven't had the hydrangeas through yet, but looking forward to that. Uh, thanks for watching. It is a place that I definitely would go and visit is Malham Cove. Uh, don't miss out on it. Um, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, please. And don't forget to leave your comments in the section below if you want to comment or if there's any other walks that you would say for us to go on. And please press the subscribe button. We'd love to have you part of our YouTube family.